Okay, this is video number one, and as promised, my first two videos just deal with minor quibbles I had about certain things that Mo said in his two videos. This first one is about his statement of infinities. His first claim is, or his claim is, that infinities cannot be traversed. And to support that argument, he makes the statement that you cannot add to an infinity. And that statement is simply wrong. I'm going to illustrate what I mean. You see, the underlying problem here is a very common misconception about infinity. And that is what an awful lot of people do. It's to treat infinity as if it's a number. But it isn't a number. It is a concept of countability, so to speak. The best way to understand infinity is to think of the concept in terms of sets. You can have sets that by their definition will contain an infinite number of elements. And I'll just name a few. You'll have the set of natural numbers, for example, or the set of even positive numbers, or the set of primes. All of these have an infinite number of elements in them. But you can see that, of course, you can add to such sets. Let's say the set of even numbers, even positives, which is basically the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. But there are plenty of numbers that aren't in that set. For example, all the odd numbers. So, given that set of even positive numbers, you can add the number 1 to that set, and add the number 3 to that set, and add the number 5 to that set. Those numbers weren't originally in the set, and now they are. You have added them to the set. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. What you cannot do, however, is say something along the lines of that now the set of even numbers plus the number 1 has more elements than the set of even numbers. That is incorrect. Because in a set that contains infinite amount of elements, you cannot say it has a number of elements. But Georg Cantor invented a concept to deal with such sets which he called cardinality. I don't know whether he actually invented it, but he certainly explored the concept of infinities and even hierarchies of infinities, which I won't go into now. But the cardinality of a set tells you about what you can do with the elements of the set. Now, in simple cases of sets that contain a finite number of elements, the cardinality basically is just the number of elements in the set. But once you get into infinities, that doesn't really apply anymore. But you can say that, for example, a set is infinitely countable. And that would include a large number of different sets, for example, the set of natural numbers, or the set of primes, or the set of even numbers, or even the set of all the numbers that can be written as one integer divided by another integer. And all that means is that if you had two of these sets that are both infinitely countable, you can always produce a one-to-one -one relationship between elements in this set and elements in that set. For example, if you had all the natural numbers is one set and all the even positives in the other set, natural numbers starting by, with, by one, with one, then you can see how you can map one to the other by basically always mapping x in this set to 2 times x in that set. And every number in each set can always be mapped to every number in the other set. And you can show that this is true for all infinitely countable sets. But there are infinities that are even more complex than that. But like I said, I won't go into that. The point is, you can add to infinities. You just cannot say something about numbers in relation to infinities. And that is something that you didn't seem to grasp. And if the rest of your argument is based on concepts like this, then it is clear to see how your 
argument will fall down along the way.